From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is the Thai Cats This Week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. This is Thai Cats This Week. I'm RJ Broadhead along with Luke Tasker, and this is the last Thai Cats This Week of the regular season. Can you believe that, Luke? It's flown it's, by. Boy, hasn't it? It was just, uh, felt like we were uh, in the Winnipeg game in, uh, in July just, uh, just a couple weeks ago, but it's been quite a, quite a season. It has, and I feel like we've been in this position a few times this year where there's good and we think the Tiger Cats are exactly where they need to be, and then there's a little bit of a fall off when we talk about bouncing back. Well, time's running out for that bounce back, and some of the players talked about it this week, how sometimes they even see it in, in the film where they're playing great. They're playing Tiger Cats football. And then there's two, three series where they're just not themselves, and that consistency they've searched for all season. They need it now, Luke. Time has run out. How, how do you you just finally get that consistency? What makes it all come together? Yeah, and you, things have to time up, you know, especially great quarterback play and great play calling. Sound, it sounds silly or basic, sound tackling. Like, you know, you, you got to get, you got to be great with your fundamentals. Jeff Reinbolt, the special teams coordinator for the Ticats is is really, really big on that with the late in the season, you see things starting to slide. People are banged up, but they're also very comfortable. You know, you're into the football season. You, you know, you, you, you can get tackled and tackle comfortably, but you start to slip on your fundamentals sometimes. And you, you got to, on the kicking game, you got to stay sharp and the, uh, you got to continue to do the things that the tie cats have done in the weeks they played great, <clears throat> which is not turn the ball over the teams that, it is a much easier path to be first in the division and play your home final and then go to the Grey Cup. The teams that have had success in the Grey Cup and getting to the Grey Cup and winning the Grey Cup that are not in that first place position, those teams timed up all of their greatness at the right moment. You know, they 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 timed up their turnover ratio and winning that each game. They timed up their being uh, sure tackling and not giving up explosive plays. And they were able to to do that at the end of the season, right where it counted. Uh, and that's what it takes to come to to play, you know, both playoff games, and then go to the Grey Cup and to win the Grey Cup. You, you've got to you got to time up all your greatness. And the Ticats have had, like you said, spells of it, but the weeks that uh, they've been missing an aspect or two, or or some things have not gone right, they haven't come away with those games. It's a great point, Luke, how those teams seem to come together at the exact right time and ride that momentum through the playoffs into the Grey Cup. And I guess if we can draw a positive out of it, the Tiger Cats are in a situation. We'll see what happens between Montreal and Ottawa, but yeah. uh, you'd have to expect Montreal is going to uh, come out playing very hard and try to win that game. So the home field advantage, clearly the Tiger Cats want that, and they have to play right down to the final game of the regular season. This game on Saturday doesn't mean a whole lot for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but it does mean a whole lot for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and they can start playing playoff football. I know they said they did a few games ago, but after that Toronto game, maybe a bit of a reset and back into into playoff mode, and maybe a wake-up call. Yeah, I think so, and just a chance to sort of – you know, set your, set your mojo going into the playoffs, you know, with a win here. And yes, they're not out if they lose, but, um, emotionally, I guess I'd say, or just in the sense of your, the team's energy to lose this game is going to be tough. And then you have to go to Montreal then you have to go to Toronto. Uh, you know, a, a win solidifies yourself. You get that winning momentum going forward again. Uh, and you do sort of what's expected of you, which is to solidify this home playoff game. So, uh, it, it would be a very, very tough, tough battle to, to then go win three straight games after losing this weekend. If they put themselves in that position now, if they win and they're able to secure the home game, they're in a great position to go to, to, to beat, beat Montreal who they've beaten before this season. And then to go and try to make right in Toronto, what was wrong last week. It's interesting with Saskatchewan, they're not bringing Cody Fajardo third in passing in the league. Isaac Harker is going to be their starting quarterback. Ten completions this year, hasn't thrown a touchdown. I uh, played a little bit in 2019 as well. William Power, the fourth, uh, Powell, the fourth leading rusher in the league. He's not making the trip. Jamal Morrow, who's mainly be t- been returning punts and kicks, will be the running back. Duke Williams, the receiver, he's not coming. He's made some big plays. They'll be without their center, Dan Clark. Linebacker, Micah Tights. 
defensive tackle Micah Johnson. So a lot of the the starters for Saskatchewan aren't going to be there. And I thought it was interesting what Craig Dickinson, the head coach of the Riders, said. He said they're backups right now. They will play on Saturday. They might not be backups after Saturday. So in the standings, the Riders don't have anything to play for. However, there's going to be a lot of players there that are battling for jobs, and that means it's not going to be an easy team to beat. Yeah, uh, never is. And I, I, would, I would actually say the same thing about Ottawa right now. Their season's over after this weekend. But I was only in that position once. Those guys are going to play hard too. There's just no reason not to. You know, you're you know you're you're done after this week, uh, and and you just there's some sort of energy that you get just giving it your all for the last go. For these guys, these young players who haven't started for Saskatchewan who are coming in here, maybe this is their last opportunity, at least the last foreseeable opportunity for a lot of these guys to try to make a big play. Um, you know, there's no there's no no they're not they don't benefit themselves by laying over or by, by not giving it, giving it their all. I, you know, I could see, I I could see a really, really hard fighting Saskatchewan team show up uh, in Hamilton this weekend. The Tiger Cats coming off their second worst loss of the season uh, against the Argonauts. It was a 19 point defeat. Their worst loss was on August 14th against Saskatchewan, 30 to eight lost by 22 points. With the the players and a team, Luke, going into a game like that, where a, a team's handled you pretty well earlier in the year, is there ever a bit of revenge motivation? Obviously, the playoff motivation's there, but do players talk about getting back at that team that, that beat them so bad earlier? You know what? It certainly was never uh, part of the motivation for me. Every player, uh, the, you know, the the spectrum of reasons to of for player motivation is wide and varied. But for me, it was never that way. Um, I think one interesting thing about the timing of these games, that was the second game of the season. This is the last game of the season. There has been a lot of football between those times. Uh, Hamilton has uh, changed drastically. They have they were able to string some wins together later on in the season. They were really struggling to find themselves at the, at the timing of that Saskatchewan game. Uh, and Sask, Sask got better and better as well. But of course, now they find themselves in a position where this game is meaningless for them uh, in so many ways. So, <clears throat> so much is different. So much time has passed. I the really the thing that resonated with me as a player is it actually felt like a different, se- you know, when you're playing late in the season, those early games feel like preseason. It feels like so long ago, a year before Labor Day. It was it was just it was just different. Your team has changed and you've changed and you're sort of in a different place as a player. And uh, I think there's a lot of that that it actually it actually you can kind of let that that game go. It's different when you lose to a team last week or two weeks ago and you're playing them again, you know, when it's and it feels like that was just happened, but this, this is, this was back in summer, you know, like we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're knocking on December now. Yeah. We're getting some snow. It's a little yeah. different. Uh, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, a few changes. Michael Domagala will be the kicker. He's been on the practice roster for the last, last six games, rookie season. Uh, you know, he's coming in in a pretty important game. Uh, Poppy White will be, part of the return game. He and uh, Brandon Banks will be in there. And one thing I found interesting, I know you're a big Jamal Roll fan, and he's gone over to the the field side corner since Frankie Williams was injured for the past five uh, or so games. Now he'll go back to the the boundary corner as Channing Stribling comes in. Unfortunately, Des Lawrence, who's the most outstanding rookie of the Tiger Cats, right. is on the one game injured list, so he, he won't be in. But for Jamal Roll, it seemed he really excelled at that boundary corner still played well in the field corner but we were talking about him every game early on in the season with all kinds of knockdowns and and interceptions is that good for for him to go back to that spot he's pretty comfortable in I think so and those guys uh you know that's a position group where those guys have got to be next man up and they've got to be able to play multiple spots coach O I don't want to misstate this but I'm pretty sure coach O was a CFL all-star at three different positions in the defensive secondary yeah so that that's the that's the top down mentality of the defensive backs in in this on this team. But Jamal Roll, you're right. I I do think very highly of him early on in the season when he was at his home there in the boundary corner. Uh you know, he was sort of every series he was doing something that that you and I were like, "Whoa, did you see did you see Roll there?" So yeah. But you know, that's the CFL game. That wide side corner, like the Z, like classic like Z receiver, the the farthest receiver from the quarterback to the field side, David Unger the third is the Ticats Z receiver. 
you know, that, that can be lonely out there for both offensive and defensive. So not a lot happens out there. It's a long throw whenever it goes out there and blah, 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 the boundary corner and the boundary half, those guys see, those guys see the majority of, of, uh, of passes their way. It's a short side of the field. Uh, they have a little less ball time to react and make their plays. And I think that was part of the reason we were talking about Jamal roll so much early on. I think excited to see him back there and to see him make plays this weekend. But one of the thing I've one of the things I've noticed about Jamal Roll this season is, yes, he's the pass breakups excellent. He's had his interceptions. He's just he's been a great player. He has also found himself in a position multiple times where it was him and an open field and a ball carrier. He always makes that tackle. He does, and I've yeah. seen he's we've seen him do it on special teams where he's been sort of the last chance. You know, without him, it's a it's a return touchdown, and he's. He makes that open field tackle very surely. And that's not just a DB being great that he's just a football player. He's just a good football player who you can trust. Excited to see him back at his sort of home position. One thing uh, the riders uh, aren't changing. They are bringing uh, Jonathan Woodard and uh, AC Leonard who have 10 sacks a piece which leads one to believe they obviously want the sack title and they're going to be coming after Jeremiah Masoli. So uh, just what are, what are some of the keys for, for avoiding them getting the sacks? So it's a, it's something that the, that's been a discussion with the Ticats offense all season. And that is just sort of the leadership of that offensive line. You have two truly great CFL linemen, Brandon Revenberg and Chris Van Zyl. But they've been mixed up at the center position. Uh, Mike Filer was there at the beginning of the year uh, on his retirement. Darius Sirocco, who's struggled with injuries all season, so they've had a, a lot of young guys mixing in with those two vets. Um, we've seen we've seen games where they have really, really played very well as a unit. But it's about the communication on an offensive uh, for for the offensive line. Those guys have to be on the same play, and they have to be able to, in a matter of seconds prior to the snap of the ball communicate very effectively and it's it's a challenge for any for any uh uh, offensive line unit but when you have young guys if they can just get their communication verbalized and pointed and very efficient it goes a long way to being able to protect talented pass rushers you mentioned Brandon Revenberg, and, and I know you're a huge fan, and we probably should talk about him way more than we do, but sometimes <laughs> that's a good thing for the offensive line when you don't right. talk about them. But, you know, fifth year in the in the league, and his second time he's been the Ticats' most outstanding offensive lineman. He's won Ticats' most outstanding rookie, Ticats' most outstanding Canadian, so he's won awards in four of his five years. He's just a, a, a special player. You played with him. How lucky are the Tiger Cats to have this guy? Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a beauty and it's a classic under, uh, underrated position or not underrated, uh, underappreciated, uh, position group, right? It's just the thankless kind of job until you let up a sack and then everybody points at you. So, (laughs) but he's a, he's a beauty of a guy, unbelievable in the locker room. He's got great flow this year, which I appreciate. He's got that long (laughs) hair coming out of his helmet. Uh, but really he's sort of, uh, he's sort of a, uh, he's an asset around the league. All any team would want to have a Canadian like that. Who's that, who's that talented and who has uh, played that consistently. He's played in all the games this year. He's uh, which is a hard thing to do. Even with a 14 game season, he's been consistent. Uh, and he's just sort of ever a, guy. Missed a game. Luke, I don't Are think he's ever missed me? a game. No yeah. kidding. Really? I, I don't yeah. give him enough credit for that. My goodness. Cause yeah. I, you know, I was with him cause you know, I hear him complaining about whatever's hurting him. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. but, I, but the guy, the guy uh, gets suited up and, 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 and goes to work. He, he's, he's an impressive, uh, impressive athlete. He really is an athletic guy. Uh, and he's just a gen, he's just a, he's one of those guys on the Ticats team. That's a positive sort of all around in the locker room, the training room on the field. Uh, really, really an asset for this team. So the award winners, I know it's been talked about a little bit, but uh, Tunde Adelike, most outstanding Canadian. Nick Cross, 22 years old, youngest player on the team, most outstanding special teams player. Great. Um, Des Lawrence, most outstanding rookie. I know Tunde was talking about it, that Craig Butler, the uh, defensive backs coach, is pretty proud of his room. That's uh, a pretty yeah. impressive uh, <laughs> uh, few awards for those guys. Yeah. Craig Butler's a guy who got some awards in his, uh, in his playing days as well. And he does have a nice, I, I like the way that uh, Craig Butler um, and Mark Washington have sort of got a, a nice culture in their defensive secondary going and Craig 
I, I was lucky to have him as a teammate and as a, and as a coach when, uh, when his, uh, when he made the transition and just a great football mind, a great football personality. He, he's, he's built for the game and, uh, doesn't surprise me that a lot of the guys in Craig Butler's room are, are, you know, getting some, uh, accolades. So I'm here in my, uh, Simone Lawrence Jersey <laughs> as his most, most outstanding player, most outstanding defensive player for the Tiger Cats, uh, any surprise with those awards going to Simone? No. I mean, how, speak, Brandon Revenberg, the same. How, how many games has Simone Lawrence ever missed in his days? Yeah, the, no guy's, the guy is unbelievable, man. I, he's 21 forever. That's why he wears it <laughs> on his shirt. The He's, he's just a, an absolute born football player. And he's fantastic for a locker room. He, he Everyone knows about the energy that he brings. And he's a playmaker. Uh, he's a he's a fantastic uh, teammate, and it makes it's no surprise that he uh, is awarded again uh, in this way. And you're wearing your Hamilton Tiger Cats Christmas sweater. Is there a yeah. story behind that? Uh, you know what? We took our family photos in this one year for the uh, for like uh, you know Christmas cards or whatever. Oh, just uh, just just Hamilton festive. It's just uh, just you know we're it's, we're knocking on the door of December here. I've never played a December Tiger Cats game, and this year they'll. Uh, They'll have a chance to do that. Just uh, excited for uh, for the festivities. Awesome. Looks good. And you and I both know that the Tiger Cats and Tiger Cats Audio Network is partnered with ProWire. And this is exciting because yeah. you go to a game and you want to watch the game, but you also want information. And we, you and I like to say, hey, we're providing some information. Of course, <laughs> uh, Louie does as well in the intermissions and pregames. And of course, whatever analysts with him. But during the game, the problem is a lot of times it's delayed. Well, with ProWire, there's no delay. So you can go to the game at Tim Hortons Field. You can watch. Luke and I will have the, the call, and it's it's immediate. So as you're seeing it, we're calling it. And, you know, I'll throw in some tidbits, some info, some stats. I know you're a stats guy now too, Luke. That you're oh, in, in I am, media. totally. <laughs> but, of course, you get Luke's analysis, and, and that's going to be so worth it. So... You need a mobile device. You need some headphones because you probably don't want to have speaker beside somebody who doesn't want to be listening to it. I don't know why they wouldn't want to listen to it. <laughs> well, it might not be Luke Tasker fan, they, you know. So you might 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 be sitting next to a SAS guy. <laughs> yeah, no chance. We see the number seventeen jerseys everywhere. You, yeah, you still, travel well. They're still rocking. Yeah. So if you have an Apple device, Ticats All Access app, an Android uh, device, you have to download the ProWire app and you have to be at Tim Hortons Field. So you, you can't be sitting at home. You got to be at Tim Hortons Field on the stadium Wi-Fi and it'll be real time. There'll be no delay. And this is our first game we're doing with the fans, with ProWire. So we want some feedback and especially on the survey, talk about how great Luke and I were. That uh, that's Would you please? That's very important. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be exciting. If you go to the game, be sure to uh, listen to Luke and I calling the game, and you'll hear the the sounds from the field. It's it's a great experience, so it'll add to the in-game experience, yeah. and we, we hope to, to give you some great information as you're watching as well. And just in closing here, Luke, uh, final game of the regular season, a lot on the line. A win means a, a home playoff game for the Tiger Cats against Montreal. Uh, what do you feel going into this game that the Tiger Cats have to do? Slight wins, small, slight edges from what from their performance in Toronto. At the first quarter of the of the uh, last matchup on the field at BMO, there were missed opportunities just everywhere. Not huge, not huge mental errors, just little physical errors left and right that would have drastically changed that game. You get those inches back. You, you you make those slight corrections, and this game gets goes goes very very differently early on. There was a stretch of three weeks where the Tie Cats, you and I, thought RJ that they were sort of really the best team that the, that we had seen in a while. Yes, that wasn't them at BMO Field. There was uh, just just too many missed opportunities, and so you get a few of those back. You're not going to play a perfect game, but you get a little higher percentage of of plays made. Uh, as opposed to plays missed. And uh, and I think this game goes very well for Hamilton. I was doing a little research, just one more thing for you. And now that we're we're both stats guys, if the Tiger Cats what? outscore their opponents in the second quarter, they're 6-0. Uh, so love that. second love quarter that. will be big. We'll keep an eye on that on Saturday. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> 
Well, uh, Luke, this is this has been exciting throughout the regular season. We know there's going to be playoffs. We hope it's at Tim Hortons Field. So uh, fingers crossed for a, a big performance on Saturday. Awesome. See you there, RJ. So the Tiger Cats, last regular season game against the Riders, 4 o'clock Eastern time from Tim Hortons Field. We'll have the call for you on Tiger Cats Audio Network. If you're in the stadium, log on with uh, the All Access app, and we've partnered with ProWire. It'll be real-time calls, so that'll be exciting. Big game, home playoff berth on the line with a victory, and we'll wait and see what happens. The Tiger Cats this week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. Like and subscribe to get their preview the last weekday before every Ticats game.